Maiden Howard. I'm the other co-organiser from the BB BSCB, and uh, I've got my glasses, so I get this job. <laughs> okay, so, so the Hook Medal is uh, awarded by the BSCB each year uh, to recognise an emerging leader in cell biology. Okay, the award is named after Robert Hooke, okay? uh, the eminent 17th century uh, natural philosopher. That's when scientists were natural philosophers. Um, who is obviously known for his uh, pioneering work in microscopy, and particularly the first book of microscopy images. And the medal design was designed by uh, Brad Amos. I won't, I won't get it out. I'm sure Anne will show it you later if you ask her nicely. It basically shows his original microscope on the one side, and then uh, cork cells on the other side, and that's where the word cell comes from, uh, which we wouldn't have a society without him, I think. Okay. So the award is given to an individual who, although within their first 10 years of, of setting up their lab, their own lab, has made, already made an outstanding contribution to uh, the UK cell biology field. Okay. And so it's a great pleasure this year to, to award the medal to Anne, to Anne Bertolotti. So Anne obtained a PhD uh, at Strasbourg University with Pierre Chambon he, she, uh, and Laszlo Toro. She then pursued a postdoc in uh, uh, David Ron's lab at Skirball in New, in New York and then returned to France before being uh, coaxed, I suppose, or persuaded to come, to, to come back to the UK and to come to LMB in, in Cambridge, where she's been since 2006. Okay, so she's made important contributions to our understanding of the mechanisms that underlie the deposition of uh, proteins, unfolded proteins in the cell, um, but, you know, which obviously you know is sort of associated with a whole series of sort of protein agricultural diseases, such, such as Alzheimer's and, and Parkinson's. And more importantly, she's interested in the mechanisms that have survived this process. She was uh, elected an EMBO Young Investigator in 2005 and an EMBO member in 2013. Okay, so it's a great pleasure then to, uh, to award this medal to Anne, if you come here. And, uh, Make sure we stand for the photographs. So do you want to go this side? <laughs> and smile. <laughs> okay. So it's a great pleasure. Okay. And uh, just to prove you get no, there's nothing free in life, she's now got to give you a seminar for <laughs> half an hour. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, it's, it's obviously a, a great honor to, to be here today um, about to give this uh, hook medal lecture. And I, 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 I was absolutely thrilled uh, to be chosen for this uh, and to join a rather long list now of, of, of really great scientists. So thank you very much. Um, and as, as a token of my gratitude, I brought you today the um, original uh, drawings of the hook medal uh, by Brad Amos, who, um, as you may know, uh, when he's not busy uh, drawings, making drawings for medals, also made some slight improvements of the original um, microscope that uh, Hooke designed. Um, uh, um, I think um, uh, 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 an award uh, brings uh, recognition, and that recognition goes to a field or a group of individuals rather than to one single person. And I, I would really like to take this opportunity to thank the, the people who have uh, either inspired or contributed to the work I'm about to present. So I'd like to thank, thank my, my mentors, uh, my colleagues, and uh, most importantly, all my group members. I've had, and, and I'm still very fortunate to have really, really great uh, scientists with me. I have a group of, of really um, talented and enthusiastic people who have joined me and taken risks in um, basically exploring the unexplored and, and trying to push the boundaries of, of knowledge. So. Uh, many thanks to, uh, to them, uh, past and present members of the lab. Um, so, um, in my lab, we are interested in, in proteins that don't always behave well and have the tendency to uh, misfold and aggregate. And these proteins really represent an important problem for cells and organisms because the, the position of misfolded proteins is actually at the origin of a really broad range of human diseases, including the devastating um, neurodegenerative diseases which affect an increasing number of individuals in our aging societies. Now, as, as you may know, uh, these diseases, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, prion disease, or Huntington's disease are clinically different, but they share some common properties. Uh, 
One important property that I will uh, remind you throughout this talk is that these diseases are late onset. They are diseases of old age. And the second uh, shared property is that these diseases share a common um, histopathological hallmark, which uh, consists in, in the deposition of disease-specific uh, proteins into insoluble aggregates. Now, um, the disease-causing uh, uh, proteins, uh, uh, the major components of the disease characteristic deposits, have been identified in most cases over 17 years ago, and, and this, the disease-causing proteins are remarkably different. They don't share any sequence similarities. They are also very different uh, in their native um, fold. However, they do share some common uh, features. The uh, disease-causing uh, proteins are actually soluble uh, proteins that are expressed throughout uh, the life of individuals, and they are benign for many, many years. But at some point late in life, they misfold and this uh, has a series of really catastrophic consequences uh, for cell, cells and organisms. And, and why this happens and how this happens is, is, is unclear. So uh, really here we, we've, we have identified what I think is an important problem, trying to uh, figure out what are the mechanisms at the origin of these devastating diseases. And that's a good start if we want to make scientific progress. The first thing we need to do is to identify a problem. So uh, we, got, uh, we, got, we got there so far, so good. Uh, but what's even more important is to try and find a way um, to solve this important problem. And in my view, um, this complex organism problem is in fact, as, at the origin, a cell biological problem. And if we um, uh, 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 realize this, then when we can break this big problem into uh, 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 two, into, uh, two um, uh, questions and that we can uh, 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 then hopefully uh, solve. And so in my lab, we've been interested in trying to understand uh, the mechanisms that govern the deposition of disease uh, uh, causing uh, proteins, because this is one of the earliest event in the disease process. And in addition, a related question my lab has been um, uh, 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 putting a lot of effort into is to try to identify strategies to help cells reducing the burden of misfolded uh, proteins with the view that if we manage to do this in cells, well, perhaps we can do that um, in mice, and if we do that in mice, well, perhaps we can uh, do this in humans. So essentially, the work we, we do in the lab focuses on, on what I think are, are, are fundamental cell biological problems with the view that our progress may uh, ultimately benefit human health. And today, uh, in today's uh, lecture, uh, I'll share with you uh, our progress towards uh, answering these two um, important questions. Um, in the um, recent years, uh, we've, we've been um, really um, interested in amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or, or Lou Gehring's disease. And, and the reason for that is that we found that actually the um, 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 uh, characteristic clinical features of this disease uh, were, were really inspiring and helped us understanding the mechanisms, uh, the molecular mechanisms at the origin of this devastating disease. So amyotrophic lateral sclerosis is a, a fatal uh, motor neuron disease, which is characterized by the uh, degeneration and loss of motor neurons, and like many other neurodegenerative diseases, this starts in adult life, usually after uh, 50 years of age. And it's really a dreadful disease which uh, 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 um, results in, 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 in death. Uh, it's inevitably fatal due to uh, respiratory failure. Now, what's, what's really uh, striking about ALS is uh, that it's, it's a really rapidly progressive uh, disease. Uh, ALS kills uh, patients, uh, uh, half of the patients die a year and a half after symptom onset. And this is uh, 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 really um, uh, similar to uh, prion disease, which are also uh, really fast and furious uh, diseases, but in sharp contrast to the other uh, neurodegenerative diseases, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, or Huntington disease, for which the disease duration is much longer and lasts for 10 to 20 years. So there's something there uh, that, that uh, we need to understand. 
Uh, another remarkable uh, feature of the, of, the, uh, of, of, of the clinical manifestation of this disease is that the, the manifestations, clinical manifestations are uh, heterogeneous. And this has been puzzling for years for clinicians, but actually uh, this is due to the fact that the region of uh, disease onset is variable. So there's a bulb onset which uh, 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 causes um, uh, speech or swallowing uh, impairment, whereas uh, 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 there's, uh, 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 the onset can also affect muscles uh, in the limbs, so in the arm or in the leg. So it's it's a very diverse uh, set of, of symptoms, but uh, regardless of the site um, of onset, uh, ALS always uh, begins uh, focally in one discrete uh, body region, and that's in 98% of the cases, and then the symptoms inevitably progress to uh, neighboring areas where they appear with decreasing uh, severity. So this has suggested 